Hi, I'm John from Pico Tea. Uh, today I want to talk to you about Knetel's Gold Scottish Brewing Tea. It's um, an absolutely fantastic tea that we've had in our range since 2015, but not something that I've actually spent any time talking about. Um, I did an interview with Susie Walker Munro during the lockdown, which you can view on our YouTube channel, which gives you a bit of a fascinating insight into uh, how the tea is grown and how rare it is. But I've not really talked about why we put it into our range in the first place and why I think it's uh, absolutely fantastic. It also comes with a bit of a price tag. It's one of our most expensive teas. And I think sometimes uh, a lot of people don't realize quite why it's so expensive. So I'll talk a little bit about it and, uh, and we'll brew it and uh, you can see what you think. So when I was first approached in 2015 to meet with Susie, and to try out our tea. It was really important when we uh, decided to take this into the Pico range that it was something which was not just a novelty. It had to be something which would stand up in its own right and particularly because of the price point that we were going to put it at. Originally, Susie had gone off to Darjeeling and stayed uh, on one of the Darjeeling tea estates. I think it was um, Makai Bari where you can learn how to make your own Darjeeling tea and she thought that if she came back to the UK, she could apply the Darjeeling tea way of making tea to Scottish tea. But what the results were, well, it was finished tea and it was perfectly drinkable, but it tasted a bit yuck. It was a bit cabbagey and a bit not great. So with a little bit of consultancy and experimentation, um, Susie invented a completely new process for Scottish tea. It took a long time for Susie to get the hang of this and how to do this, and it wasn't until 2015 that the plants were really mature enough to be able to do something with them. The tea itself, it's picked throughout the year. They pick probably the equivalent of two or three grams worth of finished tea per time, and they pick this every day throughout the year and make these micro batches of tea. So Canetto's Gold is not just a one batch of tea. It is, it is a blend, but it's a blend of teas which are made throughout the year. Susie, when she's putting these together, she tastes every single batch. She probably has up to about 50 batches or something throughout the year, if not more. And she tastes every single one. And she picks out the best of the best, which she thinks will fit into the Canetto's Gold blend. And then she blends them all together and then she delivers the finished uh, amounts to us. We are just about to launch this on our website for pre-order. There is only 60 tins of this every year um, or, or less sometimes. Uh, so it is something which is very exclusive. Uh, I think really it's something which is, is a labour of love for the people who make it and not something which is uh, really available or anything equivalent that's available to this anywhere else. So I'm gonna brew the tea and we're gonna see what the infusion looks like and we're gonna smell it and taste it. Uh, I can't put that across on a video, so I would really encourage you to buy this and try it. It is really worth every penny and it is something that's absolutely exceptional. Uh, so let's see what we get. Let's talk about the tea itself. It's absolutely amazingly aromatic, just the dry leaf on its own. Um, it's just spicy and fruity and something which you kind of have to smell it to understand what I'm talking about. I should also mention that there's not just teas like this grown in Scotland, but there is a burgeoning industry of teas like this all over the world. This tea is fully organic. When we brew it, you'll see that the leaves are actually quite a deep green color. This is because when you're processing tea, there are two peaks within the oxidation process, which you have to try and hit in order to get the best flavors. Um, if you go to the second oxidation peak and you go too far, then the tea is ruined and it will taste absolutely disgusting and it has to be binned. So Susie has always erred on the side of, the side of caution and held back with her oxidation to try and keep it um, to the best flavor without ruining the tea because there's such a little amount of it. So that's why it's never darker than, than it has been. I have pushed Susie to try and uh, take a bit of a, a leap of faith and go a little bit darker because I think the darker the tea, the nicer it is. And I think this one is actually quite dark in comparison to previous years, but it has always been quite a, a light uh, oxidation on it uh, before drying. So I would normally brew this at boiling water or 
just off the boil, the Marco tap here would give me completely boiling water, but uh, it's about 95 degrees. Best practice for everything when you're brewing tea, of course, is to warm everything up, because there's nothing worse than drinking a hot drink out of a cold rimmed cup. It's one of the worst feelings around. And I'm going to use the completely unscientific approach of a pinch of tea, because I don't have my scales on me just now. So I'm just going to put some in and I'm going to just guess roughly what I'm using. But you would use about two or three grams for a pot this size. This pot is about 400 mils roughly. Um, great thing about this tea is it's not one of these ones that if you use too much it goes disgustingly bitter. It actually tastes just a lot more intense, which is really, really good. We're very lucky in Edinburgh, where, where we are just now, we're in our tea studio. Uh, we're very lucky that Scottish water is absolutely perfect for making tea. So if you happen to be in Scotland and you're watching this video, then just use your tap water. I wouldn't filter it. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. If you do happen to be in a place with water which is not so great, then please filter it because it will just kill the flavour of this product. Um, if you want to go the whole hog and you're somewhere where there isn't Scottish water, then you could buy some spring water and that's a really nice thing to do as well. So when the tea's brewed, I would expect to get a really rich, intense gold liquor. I suppose this goes along with the name Canetto's Gold. Uh, it's really clear colour. Uh, and then from the aroma, I would uh, get, I hope to get, a kind of apple spicy, cinnamony flavour, which is, I call it the Canetto's flavour. I think one thing to bear in mind about these micro lots of tea from around the world is that you can't say, oh, it smells like this, oh, it smells like that, and compare it to teas from other places. These teas really have their own unique aromas, smells, and, and mouthfeels, everything. So it's something pretty special. This is the 2021 batch. I have actually only tasted this once when I was brought the first sample of it, and it's been locked away in our warehouse because it's such an expensive tea. I don't get the privilege to drink it very often just because I would end up drinking our entire stock and I wouldn't have any left to sell. So um, uh, yeah, this is quite special for me to be able to drink this whilst I'm making this video. So I've infused this for about three minutes, just over three minutes, and we're going to, in fact, I've overfilled the pot, so I'm just gonna pour some of the liquor out first before I remove the infuser. And you can see the amazing golden clear colour that that is. So let's have a look at the leaf. You see that actually this leaf is not like a keeman. It's not like that really dark black brown colour. It's actually quite green um, with brown tinges to it. And that's what I was talking about earlier, how it's been oxidized to a particular point but it's not gone past that and that's in order to to really just not ruin the tea leaf so Susie doesn't push it too far in order to get that really dark black tea if you go too far then the tea is just going to taste yuck so to get the best out of it you have to do this and you can see it's actually a nice intact top two leaves in the bud which is brilliant And what you get from the mouthfeel of this is it's really soft um, and syrupy in the mouth. Um, it's not got any tannins in it at all, so it's not even astringent. So I talked about with the Darjeeling video I made before, how there's this pleasant astringency, prickliness at the back of the throat. With this, there's none of that at all. It's really smooth. So it, it just goes down like honey. Um, and I think that's just, that's a testament to how good this tea is. Um, Aroma-wise, um, it's got that kind of apple-y Canettles flavor to it um, with a slight cinnamon spice finish, which uh, has always been there. But this particular batch, um, Susie said to me that she's very proud of it because she thinks it's the best batch, batch that she's ever made. It's very smooth. It's very smooth. Um, it's got a slight maltiness to it this time which wasn't in the previous batch as well. So I do think that Susie has excelled herself. She does do tours of her tea estate. I should put that out there as well. Uh, so uh, if you wanna get in touch through the Tea Gardens of Scotland website, or you can contact us as well, and we can uh, put you in touch with the right people. 
Um, she does tours of her estates, um, I think through the summer, um, where you can go up and you can organise the uh, to see the tea growing and do a tasting and learn a little bit about how it's done, how it's done as well. So that's Canetto's Gold and hopefully this video has given you a bit of a, uh, an insight into what it is, uh, why it's so expensive and what makes it so special. Um, as I said at the start of the video, uh, we currently don't have any packaging, we're waiting for our tins to arrive from China, but because of Covid we've had big delays. We're expecting them to arrive with us mid-April, uh, but in the meantime we're going to be launching this tea uh, in time for Tartan Week uh, in order to be bought for pre-order. So. If you order your tin in advance of its shipping, we are offering a special pre-order discount of 10%, which means that the tin will cost £36, and that includes free UK shipping as well. So I would uh, highly recommend that you get your tin soon because I think this year we're doing maximum 60 tins. I think it might be less because I think we are going to be putting some of this into sample taster boxes as well. Uh, and so uh, uh, if you don't get it, then you'll lose out. The next batch will be with us in uh, October again this year, but we probably won't release that again until after Christmas. So uh, if you want to try the Scottish tea um, and you do want to get your hands on this fantastic, amazing batch, because 2021 batch, as I've said, is probably one of the best ones that's been made so far, then I would highly recommend that you go online and buy that now.